Welcome back. So now we're going to set up the tester for a Cattery 5e permanent link test. I'm going to get Amanda to run through that process. You're going to see that it's very familiar to the existing DTX cable analyzer, except for one thing. This tester has something called projects. So what is a project? Think of a project like a folder. And you can have a hundred of these in your tester. In an ideal world, this tester would go to an installation and it would stay there for the duration. But in reality, this tester is bobbing from installation to installation. Each one of those installations has a different test requirement. So what you can now do with projects is you can configure those test installations individually within the tester. So what that means is that once this tester leaves here and it goes somewhere else, you just change it to that project that's been configured already and you're ready to test. So let's go ahead and create a project. Now, we describe this as having a Taptive user interface, which means if you want to change something, you tap it. So we want to create a project. Go ahead and tap project for me, Amanda. And change project. And new project. And let's put in Edmonds. Okay, and we're good. Now there is one thing that's very important to mention here. You don't have to create a project. You can just go to the default project and change your test setup from here. But that's not making full use of the tester. So do consider using projects and configuring the tester in advance. Also noting as well, with Linkware Live Professional, our cloud service, you can create all these configurations and setups in the cloud and then synchronize them with the tester. So you can actually control this tester and its platform from wherever you are, whether you're in your car or truck, anywhere where there's an internet connection. So with that said, we're gonna change our test setup. It's defaulted to CAT 6A permanent link. We want Category 5E permanent link. So go ahead and tap setup for me. Okay, and we're good. So. This screen is gonna seem very familiar to you if you're a DTX Cable Analyzer user, and that's deliberate. There are enhancements in there, but we don't wanna make it too radically different. So with that said, go ahead and tap Cable Type for me. This is our first thing that we're gonna change. And we got our last use list on here, and that's handy to have. Let's go ahead and tap More for me. And in here, you'll see a couple additional options. You have generic, which is our generic Cat5, E, Cat6 uh, cable types in there. You also have custom, so you can actually create your own custom cable types in here. And there's also a manufacturer's library as well. Go ahead and tap generic for me. And Cat5, E, U, UTP. Okay. Just below the cable type selection, you're gonna see MVP. That's the nominal velocity of propagation. What that is, is it's a value that determines what the length of the cable is. It affects how the length of the cable is being measured. So if you set this value incorrectly, then your length measurement is gonna be incorrect. Nothing else will be incorrect. It'll be just your length measurement. Best way to do this, I recommend, go to the cabling vendor's website, look at their data sheet, get the MVP off the data sheet and put that in the tester. You could use the library, but cabling manufacturers are constantly improving and tweaking their cables and you may, we may be a software update behind on what they're currently making. On to our next thing, probably the most important thing is our test limit. So go ahead and tap test limit for me. And just like cable type, we throw up the last use there. This is a brand new instrument. So what we've done here is we put up the six most common test limits that you typically come across, mainly permanent link because most of the testing that's being done is being done for warranty applications. So we have the three TIA standards and we have the three most common ISO standards. We're going to be selecting TIA CAT 5E permanent link. So go ahead and select TIA CAT 5E permanent link for me. So just below the test limit, you'll see store plot data and we're going to leave that on. Why would you leave plot data on? You know, that's a very good question and it's a question I get a lot of the time. If you're doing alien crosstalk testing at CAT6 or CAT6A levels, we need that plot data. So if you turned it off, you'd have to end up retesting all these links. Well, we're doing CAT5E today, so you know, maybe we should turn it off. No, if you turn it off, you're going to uh, disable all the pretty graphs that show up on your test report, which the customer's expecting to see. But also, from a technical support point of view, 
This has some really cool troubleshooting capabilities within this tester. If you turn off the plot data, our technical assistance center is not going to be able to help you troubleshoot your links. Now, you may be thinking, well, that's going to take up too much memory if I have the plot data on the tester. Well, you know, if that was the DTX and you talked about the internal memory, then I would agree with you. On this tester, the internal memory is a little bit more than it was on the DTX. So in this tester here, you can store 12,000 or more CAT 6A test results with full plot data. So there's no real good reason to turn off that plot data. Below store plot data is HDTDR and HDTDX. That's our high definition time domain reflectometer and our high definition time domain crosstalk. That's quite a mouthful. That's our ability to look down the cable and see where the impedance anomalies are. That's our HDTDR. Fantastic for troubleshooting return loss issues. And then our HDTDX is crosstalk. That allows us to look down the cable and see where the crosstalk is occurring. These two tests will run automatically on any links that are marginal or failing. Now you do have the option in there of running these on every test, but just be aware that they add about three to six seconds on the end of your auto test. But the value of these measurements cannot be undersold. They, they are just so valuable in troubleshooting those links. The next option that you've got down there is the Outlook configuration. Go ahead and tap Outlook configuration for me, Amanda. You get two choices. We have our T568A and our T568B. What you see on the screen here will be dependent upon what test limit you select. The TIA standard says you've got to have four pairs, so you just get these two options. But what if you want to test a two-pair CAT5E solution? Well, that is possible. In the TI folder, you would simply select TIA 1005. That's the industrial ethernet standard. That allows M12, which is a two pair. If you were to select that TI-1005, then you get more options on the screen here, including two pair Ethernet Outlook configurations. We're gonna use our T568B, so go ahead, Amanda, and you select it. And then our final option on this screen is something called AC Wiremap. Chances are you're not gonna use that these days. For a brief period, the industry was really focused on mid-span PoE devices. And the problem with mid-span PoE is you couldn't do a wire map through these devices. What this really cool feature is, is it actually allows you to wire map through these mid-span PoE devices. But the chances are, when you're doing a certification test, you're not going to see this. So make sure you leave this off. If you do turn it on, you are going to get a warning that says, hey, we're not really measuring the shield and we're not really checking the resistance. Those are two tests that can't be done through a mid-span PoE device. So we're going to leave that off. That's our test setup. Go ahead and hit save for me, Amanda. Okay, so that's our setup done. Now, when you look at the screen here, you're actually gonna see two setups. There's the one that Amanda just completed and then there's our original setup. I'm gonna get Amanda to delete that original setup. So go ahead and just tap that X next to the CAT 6A. It's gonna ask for confirmation. Yes, I'm okay to uh, delete that. And that's got rid of it. Now, the reason why I wanted to show you that is within this project, you can have 10 setups. So if you've got an installation, which is a mixture of CAT 5E and CAT 6A, then you can create one test setup for 5E and one test setup for CAT 6. Likewise, if there's fiber in there, you can also put your fiber setup in here. You don't need the module in the back of the instrument to configure those setups. So our setup is done. There's just one more important thing we need to do, and that's create our cable ID scheme, which is one of the most common errors installers tell us happen with their cabling installations. So Amanda, go ahead and tap on new ID there. So here we see our start ID and our end ID. So Amanda, go ahead and put in 01A for me. And then tap uh, last ID. The moment you tap that, it's gonna populate it with the first one. What we're doing here is we're creating a sequence. So we're telling it what our start ID is gonna be and what our end ID, end ID is going to be. So Amanda, go ahead and change that 01A to 09D for me. So we can just go back and delete that a little bit. Yep, one more. And change it to 9D as in Delta, perfect. 
Now, you can configure this cable ID scheme specifically for a copper test or a fiber test. We're doing copper testing, so we're gonna leave it as a copper test. Okay, go ahead and tap the review button for me, Amanda, please. So here, you can actually review your cable ID scheme on here. And what you'll notice is taking advantage of this here is, once I get to 01D, it doesn't jump to 01E. Because you told it the last digit is a D, it's smart enough to figure that out. Now this is very useful if you're doing an installation with quad faceplates, for instance, or you're doing a fiber optic installation where it's every uh, ID is alternating between A and B, this is a way of really improving your work efficiency. So we're good with this. So go ahead and tip save. That's our setup configuration done. So go ahead and hit the home key for me. And the one final thing we need to do is our cable ID is still selected as the original default cable ID scheme. So we'll just go ahead and change that. So Amanda, go ahead and tap next ID for me. And change cable IDs. And here we see our original default cable ID scheme and our new one. Go ahead and tap our new one. And you select it. Okay, go ahead and hit done. We are now fully configured for a Cat5e permanent link test and our cable IDs are set up in advance. In the next video, I'm gonna show you how to run a test.